Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start implementing level generation. We're going to be taking all this level data that we loaded in in the last video, and we're going to generate this big 3D mesh that's going to be our world that we can run around and explore in, and it's going to be pretty cool. But before we do that, there's something very important I need to bring up, and that is the shader problem. Now, as you may know, the 3D game engine that we're building this whole Wolfenstein 3D clone in is based on OpenGL 3. So if I run the engine for a moment and close out of it, then you'll see this line at the very start that says 4.2 point etc. And what this is, is your OpenGL version. This may not be the same for you. If this is not OpenGL 3 or above, if this is OpenGL 2.1 or something, then you won't be able to follow along with the full 3D engine tutorial. Fortunately for you, this particular game that we're making for the OpenGL 3D engine is simple enough that there's a pretty easy fix to this. If this is OpenGL, whoops, if this is OpenGL 2.1 or below, here's what you want to do. Go to your project, go to your source, and look at the basic shader class. Change this to vertex, basic vertex 120 and basic fragment 120. The, those are the OpenGL 2.1 equivalent shaders. So, and since the basic shader is the only shader we will be using in this tutorial, except for bonus content, but we'll get to that when we get to it, then this effectively solves the problem for the rest of the video, or the rest of the series. Unless you want to do the bonus content, but that's, that's bonus content. It's not necessary to build the game. So yeah. Now let's actually go to the game and start setting up the renderer, because we're going to want to actually, you know, see this world that we're generating. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a shader called Shader. This is going to be the shader that we're drawing the, well, are drawing our world with. And right off the bat, you might notice something a little fishy about this, but I'll let you see if you can figure it out. In the meantime, I'm going to initialize my shader to basic shader dot get instance. And that's great. So, now what I want is I want some texture. Something that, you know, I can draw with the shader. So I can just, you know, don't have a bunch of white or blackness or whatever other color I want to choose. So, I'm going to create a texture, texture, and texture equals new texture, and it's just going to load in test.png, which should be the test texture, which I believe is actually in the resources. If I can open the texture folder. Yes, there we go. So, we've got our new texture. And now if we create a basic mesh, so I'll have a just a mesh called mesh for now. If we have our basic mesh, then we should be able to, you know, draw something and see the texture. So, mesh, well, I can't initialize it just yet. Because what do I need to draw the mesh? I need vertices. So, I'm going to have a vertex array vertices is a new vertex array. Well, and it's going to have a new, vec new vector 3f, 0, 0, 0, 0, well, 0, 0, 0. So that's starting position, then new vector 2f, which I'll start at 0, 0. So those are my texture coordinates, and this is giving me an error for some... Ah, because I forgot to wrap this in a vertex, so a new vertex with all this data in it. And there. But I actually want four of these because I want to actually, you know, draw a plane, so there we go. And actually, I'll just go ahead and paste. There we go. So, let's see. You know, actually... No, this will be fine. Okay, never mind. So, then I'll do one, 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 and one, zero. And, respectively, the texture coordinates. One, 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 zero. And, now I'm going to have some int array called indices, which is a new int array. And it's going to have my indices, which are going to be all the faces. In this case, I have two phases, because two triangles, so... Which I believe should be zero, one, and two. And zero, two, and three, but I could be wrong. We'll see how this actually works out. Oh, right, comma. So, this is my just prototype mesh data to make sure our renderer is actually working. It should be. We saw it working in the first video, but just to be sure. 
and we're going to have mesh equal a new mesh taking in vertices and indices so we got all our data and now what we have to do is actually render it so fun times have you noticed the problem here yet if not you'll see it shortly so what I want to do is I want to draw the mesh so just do mesh.draw but here's the thing I need some setup for that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say shader dot Hmm? Is, did I name it something different? Oh, I named it Update Uniforms, right. Okay, I'm sorry. But before we, you do that, we're going to have to update the uniforms to... Or do? Yes, we do. What am I saying? <laughs> okay. But here's the thing. We don't draw our stuff with textures. We draw with material. So we actually want to replace this with material, material. Still haven't noticed it? So material is a new material that takes in a new texture and we're, everything is good in the world. So now we can bind that material but now we need two matrices. We need a world matrix and a projection matrix. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to create a transform class. So tra transform, transform. And what I'm going to want to do is take a transform dot get get transformation, and get projected transformation. And that should give me my two matrices. Have you still not noticed the problem here? Well, let's see if, if this actually runs. And did I ever bind the shader? That's, no, that's probably a good idea. So shader.bind first off, and now run. And this may or may not work. Okay, it crashes. So what went wrong? Game.render line 50. Because I never initialized transform. Transform equals new transform. Taking in just the default parameters, I really don't care. Crash again. Transform line 37. What went horribly wrong? There's actually, there's actually a bug in our engine. I did not know about this. So line 37. Can't, ah, because we didn't assign a camera to our transformation. So trans, that's not a bug. It's, that's supposed to happen, I suppose. So set, Although I guess it shouldn't happen, so camera equals new camera. Whatever, I don't care about the parameters. And transform. Dot, we'll also have to set projection because, yeah. So 70. Window dot get width. With window dot get height. And Z near I'll set to 0.01F. And Z far I'll set to 1000F. So now we have perspective reduction, we have our camera. Ah, and these are static variables, so I should use this transform class. And with that, we should be able to run. Well, it's running, it, even though... Do I have these reversed? So, 210. And, yeah. Okay, I don't. Either way... At this point, I'm not going to fix this. I'm just going to stop for a moment. Because right now, we have a little bit of a... Okay, fine, I will fix it right now. It... Don't judge me. So I'm going to leave it like that, and in the update method, I'm just going to do transform.getCamera.input. Oh, wait, this is supposed to be input, not update. So this way I can actually fly around, because I'm pretty sure it's just an issue of viewing. Yep, it is. And there. There's our texture. Okay, cool. So it is loading the texture, everything is showing up properly, and all is good in the world. Excellent. Now, let's grind to a big screeching halt for a moment. Something is very, very, very wrong with this picture. Right now, I've spent this entire video where I was supposed to be starting setting up the level, and all I was doing is setting up the renderer. That's all I spent the video doing, just doing basic, really low-level renderer stuff. I've been managing shaders, I've had to babysit the transform class to make sure everything worked, I have to... I can't just draw something straight up, I have to actually set up a giant perspective projection and create a 3D moving camera. You know, the mesh? 
you know, this is nice, but, you know, squares are pretty common shapes. You'd think they'll be part of the engine. So yeah, let's bring out our notepad, big time. We've got a lot of things to add here. And I'll start with the square problem. So, actually, you know what, I'll just start at the top. I'll go line by line and show you why this thing is going so horribly, horribly wrong. So, at the top, we've got our bitmap level. That's fine, that's our level data, that's supposed to be here. And right under it we have shader, material, mesh, transform. All of this data exists for the sole purpose of drawing a texture, drawing an image. So, first off, we have to manage data on a low level. All of this data should be grouped together. So, what I'm going to have to so what I'm going to say is just add higher level rendering construct. We shouldn't have to manage shaders, materials, meshes, and transforms just to draw a square. You know, I can understand that if we want to do something more advanced, like maybe procedural terrain generation, you know? I don't see how you could do that without managing individual meshes and maybe shaders and transforms and such, but to manage that just to draw a square? Something's gone horribly wrong. So I'll go ahead and add in parentheses, shaders, materials, meshes, and transforms. And not a semicolon, this, is, this isn't code. So yeah, that is the first problem. Again, this is leveling code, that's fine. Next up, we have to initialize shaders. We shouldn't have... Here's the thing, eventually we're going to end up with a huge bank of different shaders. We shouldn't have to figure out which shader we need for a basic, you know, just drawing a square. So, add... whoops. Add some form of automatic shader selection, because we really shouldn't need to have, you know, we, sh we shouldn't have to just know what shaders are appropriate for a mesh. You know, maybe if we were doing something more fancy, maybe if we're generating our specialized reflective crystal structure, maybe that would make sense. But just, again, just for drawing a square. Come on. Material? In this case, I'm actually somewhat okay with this, because, well, you know, materials are something you're going to want to manage in the first place. It's something you're going to want to change and do whatever with. So I'm actually kind of okay with setting up the material. But again, still, just drawing a texture should be easier than this. Next up, our big honking code for drawing a square. This isn't right. So we shouldn't need to do so much work to draw such a common shape. So add some form of primitives. Things like squares, circles, spheres, triangles, all the basic shapes that we use on a fairly common basis so that we don't have to do this every time we want to draw something really simple. So yeah, add some primitives, like, and I'll add parentheses, squares, well I'll put rectangles, more generic, rectangles, spheres, that's all I can think of right now, but <laughs> there's going to be more of them. Second, just the transform class shouldn't need to be set up, so we need more flexible transform class. We shouldn't need to set up a perspective projection just for it to work. So, yeah. We shouldn't need to create a 3D camera just for it to work. It should at least have some camera by default, so... Yeah. We need to do things with that. Here, again, we shouldn't need some... We shouldn't need specialized code to, to create a 3D moving camera just to view a texture, so here's what I'm going to say to that. We need some more, I'll say more, I'll say non-perspective views, like, for example, orthogonal views, so something like a 2D engine would have. It's going to help a lot, it's going to be really useful. Finally, we come to the render method. We can't just draw this square we've created. We have to go through a bunch of low-level stuff. And this really just gets to the whole heart of the point that all of these things ultimately stem from. And I'll put it in big underscores. Now I'll just put it normally. Rendering engine. No matter what, you can't... No matter what our engine can do, it just doesn't have a rendering engine. 
And that's going to cause us so many issues like this throughout the series. So, this is big. In fact, this needs like a special category. This needs, I'll put it just like big topics. Rendering engine. We need a, an actual rendering engine. Not just some rendering utilities like we have right now, but a full-on rendering engine. Because this is just ridiculous. That is Benny's rant for the day. And in the next video, now that we've spent a whole time working around the fact that we don't have a rendering engine, we actually will start generating the 3D mesh. Thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.